Hello everyone and welcome back to another 3D Tinkerer video. Today I will be breaking down this waterfall scene, mentioning the various techniques and tricks that I used in addition to the final render process. Before you start doing anything in Blender, it's always best to grab some reference pictures. So I went to Google Images and started dragging and dropping pictures into the free program PureRef, so I had a good point of reference when I started creating my scene. For this scene, I wanted photorealistic rocks in my scenery. I used the Quixels Megascan library to find and export photoscan rocks into my scene. The Megascans library has a large collection of both textures and models that are 100% free for Unreal projects when you link your Unreal account. They also have an add-on that allows for automatic exporting to Blender with the click of a button. Once I had my rock models imported into Blender, it was time to start blocking out my scene. To start my scene, I imported a mannequin from the Unreal Engine as a size reference while I started moving and scaling my imported rocks into place. I also added small variations to each rock to hide their similarities. I also created a large hill out of a cube that I later applied a subdivision surface modifier to. The static water was also pretty simple. I created a large cube that I applied a glass BSDF shader to, along with a principled volume node. For the rippling effect, I plugged a Veroni texture node to a displacement node, and I also animated a mapping node to it along the X rotation axis by pressing I on the keyboard. This resulted in a convincing rippling effect for the water. For the trees, I used the sapling tree gen add-on to auto-generate a base for our trees. I chose the small maple preset, increased the branch splitting level to 2, allowing for smaller erratic branching, and I also lowered the bevel and curve resolution to lower the face count for the trees as they'll mostly be hidden by the leaves. The sapling tree gen add-on does support automatic leaf generation, but they are automatically converted to a mesh. This means you cannot play with the shader settings with the same amount of control you would get from the conventional particle system. So I converted the tree into a mesh, created a new vertex group for the leaves, and applied a particle system with the density set to my new vertex group. I also lowered the frame start and end times to prevent the leaves from popping into existence as time moved forward. I also set the particle lifetime to a higher number so the leaves didn't randomly disappear. I made sure to check random order under the source settings so the leaves were spread out and I disabled the physics. The leaves themselves were simply a texture from the Megascans library set up with the conventional opacity mask and mix shader. I then duplicated the trees throughout my scene. I also duplicated the leaf particle system onto the rocks, ground, and water to add more realism to my scene. I used the same technique for the grass particle system, which I also imported from the Megascans library. The water simulation ended up taking the majority of the time on this project. The cache file ended up being about 10 gigabytes and took about half a day or so to calculate. I played with a few techniques to throw water off the cliff. In the end, I used three inflow objects at each drop of the waterfall, with an outflow object at both the bottom of the domain, under the static water, and in front of the camera to catch the fast-moving water, preventing it from hitting the domain. It is also important to note that I left the cache save location relative to the .blend file. This is important for later. The lighting of the scene was very straightforward. I grabbed an HDRI from HDRI Haven and boom, realistic lighting at no cost. With the scene lit, it's time to move on to rendering. This brings us to today's sponsor, ConciergeRender.com. Concierge is a fast, easy, and affordable cloud rendering service for Blender. On Concierge, there is no queue, and thanks to their network of 45,000 GPUs, you never have to wait in line. Concierge also supports parallel rendering, allowing for over 500 GPUs rendering your animation simultaneously with prices as low as 35 cents per GPU hour. They support Cycles and EV in Blender 2.81, as well as Cloud Sync using Dropbox, allowing for immediate syncing with your project files. You also get a free $5 in credits when you sign up. I went back to my dining room kitchen scene and rendered it on concierge in about 30 minutes. Compared to my GTX 1080, it would have taken my computer about 3 days to render 380 frames for this scene. In order to get my waterfall scene on concierge, I first had to pack all my textures into the .blend file. I also zipped up my cache files and uploaded both to concierge. To start a job, I clicked Launch Render, selected Blender 2.81 with Cycles as my render engine, and set the render type to Animation. I set my frame selection, left resolution to Native, and clicked the Render button. I was then able to track my render in the Job Manager tab, and later downloaded my frames in a zip file when the job was completed. So there you have it folks, a complete breakdown of this waterfall animation. I'd like to give another thanks to Concierge for sponsoring this video, and an even bigger thanks to my subscribers for getting me up to the 5000 mark. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you have any ideas for future videos, please let me know in the comment section down below. Have a good day, and thanks for watching.